Hello everyone, Karnasta here, and once again, just a quick forward from me. I swear these will stop when I get these videos right, but yeah, unfortunately my mic wasn't turned on properly. Well, it was turned on, but for some reason the gain was all the way down, so there's quite a lot of background noise in this video, and I do profusely apologise for that. Anyway, this is the Icarus 1. I hope you enjoy this build episode. Hello everyone, Karnasa here, and welcome back to another live build episode. Now, this one I think might be quite short, because what I've done, I have unlocked the next lot of Hydrolox engines and 1963 orbital rocketry, and I've got a spacecraft, which I'm not going to divulge yet, but I want that spacecraft, well, it weighs around 11 tons, so I want a launch vehicle that is able to actually launch that into orbit, so let's get this separate tank structure and figure out its weight, right, so I think think yeah if we can get this to about 12 tons that would do us nicely but I'm fairly certain with these new Hydrolox engines the LR87 LH2 variant I think we can do this okay let's get rid of Kerbal Engineer because that's just getting in the way at the moment and of course we're gonna get one of these I'm gonna build this four meters in diameter and it's going to be the first four meter rocket that I construct so we are really upgrading our fleet with this rocket okay yep you can go away doesn't actually change anything at the moment okay right let's make that four meters and what I'm going to do I'm going to call this Icarus I think Icarus 1 LV let's hope we don't fly too close to the sun and burn this thing up obviously Icarus being the guy from Greek mythology, Daedalus and Icarus, they built wings to to escape and yeah, it didn't, all, didn't go all too well for them. Right, okay, so I have unlocked balloon tanks as well. Now, balloon tanks are amazing because they are so lightweight. So, and you can get utilization all the way up to 100, which is really nice. So yeah, I think this rocket, it's going to be two stages, only two stages. Now, the first stage we are going to get, where are you? The LR87 LH2. Now, I can't upgrade this engine because currently I, I've only just unlocked it, so I don't have any way of upgrading it at all. Obviously, I've put avionics up the top there. Once I figure out how much this thing is going to weigh, then I will go and sort that out. Okay, right, let's fill this up with Hydrolox. We are getting 4,281 meters per second already, burn time of 188 seconds. However, this has a rated burn time of 300 seconds. So let's stretch this tank out a little bit until we get to 300 seconds. Looks like 12.4 length is going to be the magic number that we need in order for this to completely fill its burn time. And as I've said before, let's always try and go for the full burn because well, that way we're making the most use out of our engine. So that's what I, I, I like to try and do anyway. Okay, so we're gonna need an interstage, of course, because we're gonna have our main stage, well, our booster, our first stage underneath this. Now this, I've not, this isn't a Heracles series of rocket because the Heracles has a core stage, four boosters, and then it has like an upper stage. Whereas this, this is just going to be like the first stage and then the upper stage, which will be that Hydrolox stage. Hydrolox is absolutely amazing. The ISP, the specific impulse on this, let's have a look, is it in here? 403 in vacuum. So it's not as good as the RL10s that we've unlocked. However, it's still pretty damn good and that will get us a really long way. Because I have also unlocked 1963 orbital rocketry, I can actually, I've got the E1 engines, which are really nice because they have a huge amount of thrust. Now that we're starting to make rockets that are four meters in diameter, it will be nice to have something that has a little bit more thrust rather than just using those LR89s all the time. So this is that's a really exciting development that we've got as well. Okay, right, let's have a look. I have gone through and unlocked all of these already. I am about halfway through 1960 part two at the moment, maybe getting towards the end. The mission that this, I really want to build this for, I've got 60 days to build it and I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to be able to do that in time, but we'll see, we'll see if we can do it. Okay, so, Obviously, our first stage, we're going to fill this up with Kerolox. 
and let's have a look. That's 186 seconds, so that is a little bit too much. These have a rated, oh, hello. Let's see if we can get you back on about there, there, there we go. These have a rated burn time of 165 seconds, so obviously 176, we're still too much, 167. Let's see if we can get bang on, there we go, 165 seconds, absolutely amazing. Right, now we're on 9,324 meters per second of delta V, I am assuming that this procedural avionics has a lot in there. Okay, yes it does. Let's get rid of some of this because, well, I've said before, we definitely do not need that much electric charge on our launch vehicle, so we can get rid of that. I'm gonna do a quick save as well, just to KSP when you're playing it with realism overhaul and all of that. It has a, it has a tendency to crash quite a lot. So uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do save as much as possible because we really don't want to lose all of our progress. Cool, there we go. That looks about what I want it to look like. And there we go, a nice little boat tail on there as well. Let's obviously take the density of these down. I think, yeah, I, I've, I've never had a problem with setting my density to 0 0.01 on anything that I have built. And I think, as was mentioned in a comment, I think it reduces kind of the pressure that those fairings can take. But yeah, I've never, ever, ever had an issue with with a fairing like breaking or anything like that because the density is too low. Okay, let's expand the hangar just so I can go up and have a look at this. Obviously, we want these to deorbit our core stage. As I always say, I do try to like to deorbit my core stage. Although I have been noticing that even though the periaps of these stages that I get to near orbit or get to orbit and then deorbit, they don't actually go because the periaps isn't low enough for KSP to delete them, which is a little bit annoying. So I did spend a rather long time in the tracking station in last episode, I think. I didn't show it, but I went through and I had to delete an awful, awful lot of just these core stages that were still like floating around in flight and yeah i think that has helped make my game run a little bit quicker right let's get this into stage fairing on like that there we go very nice that's exactly the height that we want it once again we'll take the density down and i think i'm pretty much almost there we've we've got 9552 meters per second of delta v so this let's have a look weighs 12 tons exactly that should hopefully be well, that's more than enough. Let's get a payload fairing on the top though. Once again, take the density down, sweet. And let's do the old fairing auto shape trick just so we can make it kind of the size that I reckon it will be. Okay, right. How much do we weigh? See, we only we weigh just under 300 tons. Hydrolox is incredible. It means your rockets are really, really light. Obviously, liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, both very light fuels. Got to be careful with Hydrolox, obviously, because you've got a lot of boil off to consider with. However, because this is a launch vehicle, I think I might put like two MLI layers on there. MLI layers obviously reduce the the boil off because multi-layer insulation, that's what MLI stands for. So hopefully that should really mitigate any boil off that we do have. But when we've got like spacecraft that we want to keep in space for a little while longer, I would like to put a little bit more MLI layers on those hydrolock stage. But yeah, because it's a launch vehicle, this will only really be in flight for what, 10 minutes at the absolute most, I guess. Okay, right now, Let's get a launch clamp and put it on the bottom. I'm not gonna do any fancy stands with this. I think we'll just go with this launch clamp. Cool, that looks good. Right, now let's sort the staging out a little bit. We want those two E1 engines to fire at the start. Then we want that to detach and fire with those separation motors, as well as the LR87 LH2 engine that we've got in there. Then we want our payload fairing to go. Then finally, I need those to go there. And I think that is it. And right, well, we've still got 9,488 meters per second, but we need to add our avionics to here. So we need about 290 odd. Let's see 
what that puts our final delta V at. Right, where am I looking? Where am I looking? I cannot find it. There we go, control mass. Let's go for 300. 9,384 meters per second of delta V. Okay, so it's below the 9,400 that I like to have. However, I hope that this thing should still be able to make it into orbit. And right, I think that looks, that's, that's pretty much it. Like I said, this shouldn't have taken too long and it really hasn't taken too long. Okay, so I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a quick paint job. And there we have it. The rocket is complete. The launch vehicle, Icarus 1 launch vehicle has been completed. So now what are we going to do? Of course, we are going to go into crash and we're going to test out this thing and make sure it can get these 12 tons to a low Earth orbit. I'll see you on the launch pad. So here we are on the launch pad. Let's run up our MechJeb ascent guidance and see if this thing can get to orbit. Let's see if we can get to a 160 by 160 circular orbit. I have updated MechJeb. I have updated a lot of mods because yeah, I got the new textures for Earth. So you can see like, oh, I don't know really what's going on here, but yeah, I updated a whole host of my mods, which is really nice. So. Let's, yeah, let's stop chatting about mods that I've got running at the moment and let's actually launch this thing. Okay, so looks like we're gonna have 910 meters per second of Delta V left over at the end. So as I said in the Heracles one build, if you have over 800, genuinely, genuinely, generally you are okay. So without further ado, let's hit that. Oh, hang on, no. Nope, I want it. I want a circular orbit, please. Okay, <laughs> let's try that again. Without further ado, let's launch this thing. Well, it's got off the launch pad. We have sufficient avionics. That is always a worry when I try and do something like this. Well, especially when it's like a live video like this because I could have really messed up the avionics and then <laughs> this thing would have started to go and then the engine would have flamed out as soon as the launch pad kind of yeah, released the rocket and then, well, yeah, it would have fallen back in and smashed onto the launch pad. So luckily that didn't happen. Anyway, let's set this to four times speed because I don't, I don't need it any slower than that. This thing has, it's fairly sturdy. We can do physical time walk through. I don't know what's going on with the coastline there though. I think the longer I've had this game open for this recording session, I am recording 1960 part two at the same time as I do this. Yeah, things get a bit buggier and glitchier. Like, look, the terrain of Earth is looking all rather patchwork. And I'm hoping that when I actually shut the game and restart it, that should all be fixed because it was fine when I first booted up the game. There we go. We have that LR87 LH2 stage fire off. Fine. We don't need to hot stage it. It's okay just to launch it as is. I don't know if these separation motors help with the ullage as I detach it or not, but that goes, yeah, it worked rather well. Obviously, hot staging is required in some cases. I know in the earlier years of this series, I definitely hot staged some of my rockets. However, I prefer not to because I think you probably lose a little bit of Delta V doing that when you've got both engines firing at once. And without MechJeb, it's actually really kind of almost terrifying trying to do it because, yeah, you've got to really time it perfectly. And if you fail, like if you do it too late, there is a chance that obviously your engine won't ignite because you will get vapor in the feed lines, which is really, really annoying. But yeah. I'm glad that I don't have to really hot stage that much anymore. And if I do, there is a great little function on this ascent guidance. Where is it? Where is it? So yeah, there we go. Support hot staging, lead time. I like to have it between 1.5 and 1.8 seconds. And I have found that that gen generally usually works. So yeah, MechJeb is really good at doing that as well. MechJeb PVG is just absolutely brilliant for, well, doing launches. So, okay, there we go. We've hit our 160 kilometers by 160 kilometers orbit. So this thing is rated and we've still got 228 meters per second of Delta V left. We could possibly maybe even push this up to 13 tons. I don't know, that might be pushing it, but yeah, 
we can get 12 tons to orbit. That's absolutely fantastic. So let's see how far into the atmosphere this goes. So yeah, there we go. Now that we've deorbited this stage, it's only going to get to 90,000 meters, which obviously is low enough to be in the atmosphere and it will eventually, well, that's probably low enough to bring it down next time, potentially. I'm not sure. I don't, don't quote me on that. But it's not low enough for if you leave the rocket and go away, KSP won't automatically delete it, like how it deletes rockets that have gone below a certain attitude, altitude even. But yeah, so brilliant. Anyway, this rocket all works. Everything is fine. We've still got electric charge at the end of this launch. Let's see how much we actually have left. We've still got quite a bit left, so could even get rid of some more of that. But I think we're fine with that. I think we're happy with this rocket. So I'll see you back in the vehicle assembly building. Well, now that we've tested it and we know it works, here comes the expensive part. Obviously, we're going to have to tour this thing because we hope to use this quite a lot. Let's have a look. So this is a cool new feature that's been added in our RP1. So you can click and hold on that and it will tell you up on Kerbal Construction Time how long this rocket will take to build. So 52 days, that's going to be cutting that mission tight, that Venus transfer window tight. Or I think we might be able to do it if we rush the build. I'll see. We'll see. We'll see in the 1960 episode anyway. Okay, so right, yeah, enough dithering on with that. Let's actually tour this thing. 171,000 funds. Wow, that's really expensive. That is because, well, I'm using 4-meter tanks and I'm using balloon tanks for the first time. So obviously balloon tanks are really expensive to make and produce, but they are, well, quite frankly, really good at getting stuff up into space. So we're going to have to bite the bullet. We're going to purchase all toolings. My funds have just gone down dramatically. And there we go. That's that. And oh, of course, what else do I need to do? I need to go in and save this as a sub assembly. It's not going to be much use being just here. Right. OK. No, I didn't click on the sub assemblies. Membly. There we go. Membly. Menu. Oh, words. I need to use my words. I need to use my words properly. Right. There we go. Sub assembly drop zone. And this is going to be the Icarus 1 launch vehicle. Description. So we're going to go 12 tons LEO LV, which is quite considerably, that's what, four and a half more than the Heracles 60 VII dot V. Cool. So yeah, there we go. That was it. Now I'm going to go and grab this and put it on my little secret project that we're going to be doing that, well, We've got 60 days. Obviously, it's going to be Venus related, but yes, I'm going to hide that rocket until we actually get to Venus. But anyway, if you have enjoyed this episode, why not go and give it a like? If you have really enjoyed this episode and would like to continue with the content on my channel, please do consider subscribing. I have been Karnasa, and I will see you later.